If you're a regular listener of the Last Wicked podcast or follow the podcast host on Twitter, you know that we love our IPL action. You know, watching, tweeting, and talking about all of our favorite players facing off against each other for a frenetic few weeks every year. It's, it really is one of the highlights of the year, you know, something we always look forward to. And this year is no different, or it should have been. Uh, over the last several days, it has been increasingly hard to focus on all the cricket when there is a pandemic ravaging the country the tournament is being held in. So even if you're not in India right now and you've not seen the heartbreaking visuals coming out of the country, uh, you must have heard or come across news coverage of the alarming rise in cases as well as deaths due to COVID-19. And in this context, uh, there has been an increase in chorus of voices who are questioning the coverage of the ongoing IPL and in some cases, if the cricket should even take place. Uh, so we at the last wicket just want to take some time here to share our thoughts. Uh, so Mayank, why don't you start off? What, what do you feel about this ongoing debate? So it's a tricky one for sure. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is before the IPL started, um, I remember reading a report saying seven or eight groundsmen at the Wang Kede tested positive. And, you know, at that point, overall India numbers seem to be under control. Um, so it, it seemed like it was a one-off case, but I remember reading somewhere, you know, somebody suggesting, well, might just be better to have it in, you know, Dubai, like we did in 2020. And that wasn't, in my mind, that wasn't a bad suggestion, obviously, like, moving a tournament last minute is a very, very difficult thing. But considering where we are now, um, I think there's a few things that the teams can do and should do. Um, obviously, it's not the cricketer's fault or the franchisee's fault of, of, of where you know India is currently. But at the same time, you can understand people who've you know either been affected directly or indirectly or have had you know loved ones who are waiting for tests while these cricketers are, you know, with their families in the bubble, getting tested every other day, or I think it's every three days. I, I don't know the detail exactly. And all these tests are being, you know, separately kept for these cricketers. So that indefinitely is one aspect which, um, you know, I can see why it impacts the general population and something that IPL team needs need to think about. So I don't necessarily think that it should be canceled. Or it should be, you know, just, uh, you know, the tournament should just be scrapped for this year. Uh, I do see that a lot of people are using it as a distraction in these painful times and, you know, everybody copes in different ways. So if it, um, if it acts as a distraction for even one person, it, it's, it's doing its job. But at the same time, what IPL teams should do in my mind, one is shortening their, you know, squad. Because if we have 30 people squads and then another 15 people as support squad, um, there's 45 right there, then there's probably families. So, you know, if 60 people are getting tested regularly on a, uh, and, you know, getting taken care of, then it, it's definitely taking, um, and that's just for one team, by the way. So, you know, eight such teams, it's obviously taking up a lot of tests, which could have gone to the general public. So my thought would be maybe ask all teams to, you know, work with the limited squad this year, limited support staff this year. That way the others can, you know, the, especially, you know, some of the youngsters, some of the even overseas players who are not really used too much, um, can just stay away and, and um, stay safe where they are. And, and all those tests can be used for the general public. You echoed a lot of my own thoughts there. Uh, but Nish, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I think personally, um, you know, following games, um, when, you know, in the, in the limited time when I'm on Twitter, which I'm not these days for various reasons, um, but in the limited time I'm there, my flat timeline is completely, you know, it's pretty surreal to see. It's either completely devoted to cricket or it's just people retweeting asking to spread the word for the need of ventilators and, you know, beds and other equipment that we need to uh, help people in need, right? So um, as far as the IPL going on, um, I, I see both sides of the, I, I'm going to sit on the fence here a little bit um, because 
people are you know all holed up in their apartments and houses there's a lot of anxiety build up you know which we in the US went through um, last year and still going through in some parts of the country so i can totally relate that when there's nothing to do you need some sort of an escape for your stress right and that's where the ipl fills that vacuum um and i think uh, arjun also made a good point which we'll hear later on about you know the economic um impact of not having an ipl going on because there's a lot of um um people that are reliant just like the premier league right like if if it doesn't happen it it cascades down to other parts of the country and the economy and you know some clubs uh in in the uk you know are very close to administration and financial ruin right so similarly it can affect different families and lower income households in a very negative light as well so i see both ends of the spectrum um i don't think uh, we need to or the authorities need to call it off just yet while being you know very carefully monitoring the situation as well um so yeah i think we just have to play this by ear and do what we can with being in a position of privilege to help those in need yeah i i, I agree with i mean both of you made very similar points and, and my personal thoughts on it uh when this debate just started to pick up over the last few days my initial thought was please leave the ipl alone let's not stop it and it's it's selfish right like i don't live in india right now uh all of my family and friends they live here in the united states i have a few relatives in india um but you you can say oh it's easy for you to say while you're sitting like thousands of miles away that the ipl should go on um but yeah it was selfish because i love cricket i i love ipl and i want it to go on uh regardless of whatever else is going on in the world uh but you know over the last few days i've been seeing like tweets and like messages from people i respect whose opinions i respect uh about how it's been hard for them to to really not just watch cricket but hear about cricket at the same time as you know all these visuals that are coming out uh of india or all the news that's coming out of india there's this cognitive dissonance of enjoying cricket or enjoying ipl on one hand and on the other you see all the suffering and all the misery and you know that got me to thinking and i was like talking about this with my wife too uh, just trying to trying to think of it dispassionately and trying to see if this is something that is needs to be seriously thought of like should should the ipl continue in a time like this and honestly after the, the last few days of thinking about it um my my thoughts and again i'm not saying it's all correct this is just my opinion i think the ipl should continue i think the games should continue the coverage i think uh and i think it we can we are seeing that difference in the last couple of days it needs to be toned down in terms of just the way the games are presented as if it's like the most amazing thing and rather spend more time spreading awareness about what people need to be doing and i think they are they have been doing that doing that over the last couple of days where the commentators have been talking about or repeating the fact that people should wear masks and get vaccinated practice social distancing stay home because these are the the things that they can tell us right now uh but the other things that i was thinking about well if the ipl is suspended what difference does it make how is it is it helping society is it helping people like you know in terms of health and safety does that make a huge impact or difference i mean if you're uncomfortable with the ipl going on then probably don't watch it right like these are like the thoughts that that popped up and like you guys mentioned there's also the economic mm-hmm. impact i remember last year in, in the us when all of the sports tournaments and leagues got canceled especially college sports Uh, working at a university hospital i remember the impact it had on uh people who were employed specifically for the purpose of the college sports people lost their jobs people lost their benefits 
and it was huge. It's not just about the players. It's not just about team owners as such. It's about the people who work behind the scenes, people whose income depend on these once a year kind of tournaments. So this yeah. is actually helping people too, um, apart from the actual cricket itself. And that is why I think it's important for this to continue. And like you guys mentioned, it's also a distraction for people. Uh, you know, Ponting, I, I saw an article earlier today that Ponting said, the IPL can still bring people a lot of joy. And I think that's true. People process tough situations and lives in different ways. I, for one, like to get distracted. I want to get distracted and not focus on all the awful things that are going on. And, you know, the pandemic has shown people get anxious, people go through depression. And if there is something, it's just like you're watching a movie on TV or you're watching a TV show, you're distracting yourself. And why cannot cricket be one such medium? I mean, those are just my initial thoughts. I'm not saying that all of these are correct, uh, but this is where I'm coming from. And I suspect a lot of people, you know, who are tweeting about cricket or who are watching the IPL, they are along the same lines where rather than sit home, because all, that's all you can do right now, stay home and just kind of, you know, doom scrolling on Twitter or just constantly watching the news and getting depressed or frustrated or even helpless. Um, it, it's just nice to be doing something else. And, and we'll talk a little bit later about how we, what we can do to help. Um, but these are just my initial thoughts about why I feel like the IPL should stay or continue, but with changes, of course, we need to tone down the coverage and understand the context of what is going on around us. Right, and I think, I mean, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, but um, you know, I like the fact that you mentioned the opposing view, right? What happens if it is it does get canceled? And objectively speaking, apart from you know, the medical experts who are um, all aligned to help these players, these, you know, families, support staff, apart from freeing those few people up, um, and I don't know the numbers, so maybe there are hundreds of people, uh, for all we know, uh, but apart from freeing up those hundred odd people, um, it doesn't really do anything else to help the ongoing crisis. If there was, you know, canceling um, the IPL would help in some other way, I, I could still see, you know, the sense in that, which is why in, in my mind, the middle ground is sort of trying to minimize the usage of those resources uh, so that they can go back and serve the public, which definitely is in bigger need right now. And um, at the same time, continue to those who need uh, you know, who are just sitting home, who are in isolation, who are in various states, but just need some sort of entertainment, um, continue to be entertained for them. And I think the other piece that is probably worth thinking is, you know, when I watch the IPL, I feel like there's every 30 seconds, you know, if somebody sneezes, there's a sponsor for that sneeze as well. So, um, you know, maybe work with some of the sponsors and say, we will you know, let's say, I don't know what their man of the match award is. Let's say it's two lakh rupees. Um, maybe say, could you increase that to two lakh 50,000 and every game that 50,000 extra goes to some organization, which is helping, um, you know, helping the COVID response, whether it's right. making oxygen cylinders or something like that, because think about 50 games. Um, and I know we've, go, we've gone through what, 16, 17 already. So still 40 games, that's still, a good amount of money, and I'm sure these, um, you know, these companies would would be happy to take that goodwill, just do that good, goodwill gesture, in the name of sponsorships. That's a great point because if you see the awards that are being given every match, you're like, why did you have to create a separate award for that? Like it seems redundant. There's like four or five different people, uh, different players getting awards for stuff that's Really, that's their job. <laughs> you know, <laughs> six shouldn't, you know, get you separate. But anyway, in an, in an, in another year, it doesn't matter. It's just one of those quirks of the IPO. Right. But in a year like this, where it's important to stay grounded and be aware of what people 
and when I say people, most of them are probably cricket fans uh, who are going through all of this. These are people who probably in another year would be watching the IPL and abusing one of the teams or the players. But, you know, people are struggling. Cricket fans are struggling. Their family, their loved ones are struggling. So to be aware of that, this is what we, this is what they can do, right? Like we are talking about, well, if they are not going to, if they're going to still continue playing the game, then what else can they do to help in their capacity? And I think you brought up a great point. And I read this uh, article in Crick and Folio today, a um, couple of suggestions that they had was, you know, sponsor distribution of N95 masks or hand sanitizers or setting up vaccination camps. These are great ideas because the IPL is run by the richest cricket board who can definitely afford to do that. Uh, and the sponsors too, you know, the, all the money that they're putting right. towards giving, giving it's, it's actually, they're kind of throwing money is what I would say, throwing money at cricket players for just being there on the field, use that money uh, for good. And this other interesting thing that I've I, noticed, I'm sorry, Nish, go ahead. I just had a quick point here while, you know, we're discussing the impact of COVID all around. Um, we should also bear in mind the welfare of the players as well, especially the foreign players who have no family or any sort of like, you know, uh, support. Yes, these players are, you know, like, you know, very highly paid and looked after. And uh, this, you know, from the outside, it looks like their life is a bliss, right? But it's not always the case with um, bubbles and having to travel uh, and, you know, living out of a suitcase for so long, right? So it's... Um, something to keep that in mind as well when we discuss whether the IPL should go on or not. It's, you know, it's, I think Andrew Tai pulled out recently, if I'm not mistaken. He just left earlier today or yesterday. Right. He left the Royals. Citing anxiety, I believe, over the bubble life, right? So it's, it, it, it impacts us all in different ways. And obviously, you know, it just, this pandemic has exposed the false lines that already exist between the rich and the poor. So the, obviously the poor are much more impacted than the rich, unfortunately. So, And yeah, that's, that's a good point because we were just talking about how, what the BCCI can do, what the sponsors can do. Um, but I've also noticed, you know, on social media that people are going after a very favorite target, which is the players themselves, right? Like Indian players, or well, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into the politics of it. You know, they have got their fair share of criticism recently for, for some of the things that they have said and not said. Um, but in this case, specifically when it comes to the pandemic, you know, people have been up in arms about why aren't the players doing more. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that there are players who are doing uh, their part. We, we have seen Harbhajan saying, Ravi Chandra and Ashwin, and I'm sure there are a lot more players, especially in the last few days, who are kind of amplifying tweets uh, or posts where people are seeking help finding oxygen cylinders or finding beds. Um, these cricketers are using their platform in the right way uh, to spread awareness and get the help that's needed. Um, so they are doing their part and it's important to acknowledge that. And that is something that I think more players should be doing short of just, you know, not playing because again, keep in mind, this is their livelihood too. It's like someone telling you, well, you cannot do your job. Uh, well, if you don't do your job, you're not getting paid. Um, so it, it, you have to keep in mind, it's not a black and white issue where, oh, look, we're all going through the suffering. So we don't have time for games. Well, it may just be a game for you, but it's a livelihood for that player. Uh, so I think it's unfair right. uh, to just say, you can't play cricket at a time like this. Let's all just, you know, not do anything else, but just, you know, accept what's going on right now. I think people can do whatever's in their capacity uh, to help uh, one another. Uh, and I think players, this is what they can do, just given the huge platform they have, given the huge following they have. Uh, they can use their platform to get help for people who are in need. And um, yeah, so yes. And, and, I, and we saw that in the coming days, this may affect participation in the league anyway, because as Snish said, we saw Andrew Tai uh, leaving earlier. And then I heard 
uh, that a couple of other Australian players are also kind of itching to head home uh, because of the situation here, but also the fact that in Australia, I think they're trying to kind of close their borders or trying to limit travel uh, from India. So a lot of this may not even be in the IPL's hands, you know, as players wanting to leave and go back home and situation continues to get dire, their hands may be forced and they may have to suspend. But in the current situation, I think keeping all of these factors in mind, I think it's reasonable that they continue to do what they do, uh, which is play cricket or organize these cricket games. But at the same time, be aware of what is going on in India right now and do their part uh, in the capacity and the privilege that they have to help people. Right. I think the one one last piece I'll add is, um, you know, when criticism is laid on the cricketers, and many many times it's fair, um, but you know, people will always look at the 17 crore Virat Kohli or 15 crore or whatever his price tag was, Chris Morris, and say, "Come on, he's got enough money to not worry about this." But really, not every average cricketer in the IPL earns that. The truth of the matter is, a lot of these under 19 stars who are you know young uncapped players for them this is their chance to make a career and even getting a couple of good seasons makes a big difference to their livelihood and that's only players think about broadcasters think about um, all the people behind the scenes from groundsmen to um, you know producers and all, all those kind of people who go do all their work behind the scenes they're not paid in the millions for sure they're not paid you know, in the crores or even tens of lakhs for that matter. Um, so think about them as well and the impacts it has on them as well um, before, you know, just making a abrupt decision, I guess. Yeah, and one more thing, you know, in defense of players is, like, you know, anxiety and depression don't differentiate between the rich and the poor, right? It impacts everyone equally. It doesn't matter. It doesn't go by your paycheck, really, right? Yes, Um I don't, I don't know the science behind it, so I'm not going to go into the um, social strata and all those things. But from a lay perspective, you know, like I, I was personally impacted by coronavirus and, you know, my, com- my previous company had to, had to go through mass layoffs and I was impacted by it, right? But luckily I was privileged enough to, you know, bounce back and, you know, had a good support structure, but not everyone is privileged enough to do that. So I think it's very easy to sit and comment from an armchair perspective, you know, but um, really this sort of pandemic is once in a generation or once in 100, 200 years event, right? So we really don't know what the right level of preparedness or reaction is, but we're all trying our best and, you know, we should continue to um, double down on whatever we can, uh, those in a position of privilege should, can do. Um. And then before we end this segment, do the do either of you have any thoughts on what we can do, you know, as a podcast or just as individuals, uh, what we can do as people who are living abroad, um, but it doesn't matter. We have loved ones back home in India uh, or just friends back in India. Do you have any thoughts on how we can help, uh, what we can do from our part? Right. I, I think what I've done is personally so far, I've bookmarked some of the resources that, you know, I saw, I know there was a COVID-19-twitter.in or, or some website like that. I forget the exact address, but I bookmarked that. And whenever I see um, some extended circle posting on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, I, I'll try to search and, you know, because they're, they're probably posting because they're in a position of uh, you know desperation so instead of just sending them the link I try to do my bit and if I have a little bit of time just search and say hey this is what I found uh, which seems recent in your city try calling this number maybe maybe it helps and that's I and, and again like I, I understand we all have jobs to do we have full-time jobs we have family and all of that so I can be sitting and doing that 24 7 but at least whenever I have a fee, free 30 minutes I, I try to do that um, just catch up and I mean, I think sitting away, obviously, the one other piece that's worth considering and I'm definitely thinking about is monetary contributions. So I've been looking at 
some of the foundations that have been going around um, on, on social media who are saying, you know, we're doing this, we're helping buying oxygen cylinders, helping with uh, free meals um, to, you know, people who are stuck somewhere, um, who are in a bad situation. And um, yeah, we're, we're just, you know, maybe even if it's a small contribution, make that so that we can uh, continue, uh, you know, doing something, even if you're sitting so far off. Nish, do you have any comments? Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, you know, we will also look to, um, through our Twitter handle, do our part in, you know, spreading the awareness as well as uh, maybe, you know, I will look up as to how to maybe set up some sort of like, you know, fund. I've never done this before. I've just like doing it directly. But if we can pull our uh, time and some thoughts into setting up a fund, then definitely we'll look into it. I would recommend our listeners to, continue following um, us at the last wicket so they are aware of where they can donate. Right. Well, we are going to leave that here. And, you know, I just want our listeners to understand that, you know, while opinions on this issue may differ, we can agree on one thing that is IPL or no IPL. It is absolutely imperative that we accept the reality of the times we live in and do our part to not just keep ourselves and our loved ones safe, but also we need to look out for one another and help those in need in whatever capacity we are able to. So the last wicket, as Mish mentioned, will continue to put out content and share our thoughts on social media for those who are looking for some respite from all that is going on around us. But we will also do our part in sharing and disseminating information that could save a life. So thank you for sticking with us and let's get through this together. <laughs>